Welcome back guys, it's Spud here again with another crossout video for Flat Cannon Gaming and in today's video we're going to be giving you the lowdown on this game's economy system so that you can maximise your profits on the market without having to download a bloody crypto wallet. Let's go. So let's start out with a simple overview of the various currencies in this game and much like many of the mainstream quick play games Crossout has moved to a free to play system but with plenty of upselling in paying to advance. Now this game isn't quite as convoluted as PUBG for instance which has no fewer than 9 currencies to map a relationship between but it's still quite a confusing one for new players to get on top of but we think we can do a really good job of breaking things down in the simplest form. So let's start out with the very fundamentals then. Every game mode in this game has a reward of some description and XP goes alongside that. Uh, materials across the top here refer to scrap, batteries, wires, copper and plastic for which the going rates and average earning in equivalent coin are going to show on screen now. These are your bread and butter when it comes to the economy building because it simply takes just playing the game to earn them. XP then alongside that allows you to rank up in the default engineers faction and one other chosen faction at any point and levelling up in these factions brings new non-tradable parts and sometimes tradable weapons which are also key to progression. So that's the very very basics then and besides materials you'll have something called engineer badges which are earned by completing weekly challenges or by reaching milestones in XP at the start of the game or reaching milestones via the often multiple game pass systems in play. Getting to 3000 engineer badges will qualify you for this beauty, a crate whose contents will change on a weekly basis and it's pot luck which one you get and that changes every Thursday I think and the items within may vary in value from around 100 and 150 coins through to about 400 coins. Now if you have reached 3000 engineer badges and you're able to trade in for one of these crates you may choose to gamble and open the crate but FCG's advice here is to actually sell the crate for its value. I think you'll get on average about 270 to 290 in-game coins and then you can buy whatever you actually want in time rather than relying on that random chance uh, in which case you could be up to 120 coins worse off. At least doing this when you've reached level 30 is probably the most sensible choice. Perhaps in the earlier levels it's exciting to get a new part which might send you down an unknown avenue of crafting. If you are new to the game then so be sure to head to this storage tab and then hit this button to go to all items. Scroll to the very bottom and make sure you don't have any crates of any colour unopened just sitting there uh, because they should all at the very least have some materials in there that you should be able to make use of. On this basis then we think that one badge is actually worth around 0.09 of a coin. Now I keep coming back to what things are worth in coins and this is because the simple fact that coins can be exchanged for simply any part in the technology tree. So this monstrosity here is the uh, is the tech tree. It's got so many parts you couldn't shake a stick at uh, and these can of course be crafted in the most part but sometimes uh, it's not possible to craft uh, and it is often genuinely cheaper just to buy the part outright. And of course it is much faster to attain the part that way as well. Uh, now we recently discovered CrossoutDB.com with whom we have no affiliation by the way but if you are wondering if it's cheaper to craft or buy an item that's where you should probably head first. So we've covered materials and badges then and these are the two options offered up to everyone to grind for coins. 
alongside unlocking parts via the Battle Pass or via XP to sell on the market, of course. Now, on to the thornier subject then of investing actual money, which is an absolute ball ache to set up, by the way. Uh, so many convoluted steps and the verification process absolutely sucks. But as that alludes to, I've already sunk money into this game and it is a viable way to progress a hell of a lot faster. But whilst I stand by the fact that this game isn't exactly pay to win, it's certainly pay to progress, um, and I will not challenge anyone who thinks otherwise. Now if you do want to pay real money for in-game currency though, there's definitely a right way and a wrong way of doing it. The right way is to buy the Battle Pass. If you've reached level 40 or higher, it is simply the best value for money to do this, as you typically unlock an incredible amount for that cost of, I think, £8.50, which is the UK price. Or, on the other right way of doing things, it is to wait for the shop to go hard on discounts and buy a car or pre-built vehicle who has mostly new parts for you to obtain. Uh, the Catalina cabin option is on sale, I think, every fourth week, or certainly it seems so, and you can get a hefty amount of coin on top of these actual items in exchange of the whole package as well. Now, the wrong way to invest in this game is to buy cross crowns that you simply exchange for in-game coins, as it simply doesn't offer anywhere near the value for money of those previous two options. So let's have a look into what £1 buys you in each case, shall we? So if you opt for a simple coin pack via cross crowns, then you're going to be getting, on average, around 73 coins to the pound. And at best, with the mega value option of that 84.99 pack, you'll up that number to around 88 coins per £1 spent. Certainly not great. But if you buy a pre-built vehicle and it comes with additional coins, such as our earlier Catalina example, you might be able to fetch closer to 170 coins for every £1 invested. Although the capital required is obviously higher here, the Catalina at full price might cost you more than a brand new game usually does. However, when on sale, and as I said, there are plenty of times these vehicles have 30, 40 or 50% reductions in costs, you can squeeze up to four times that simple cross-crown pack value out of your purchase, upping it to a near 250 coins per pound invested. Now at this point, I feel like I need to testify I am not endorsing this, nor do I work for Gaijin. I am simply eager to share what I have found to be the best way of spending money on this game. Now the battle passes then, if levelled up past around level 40, could be worth closer to 500 coins per £1 invested instead. And if you sell the items unlocked that come along that premium ladder, um, and if you add all of those badges and coin packs and decor up, it can be even higher than that. Um, you can really make a smart investment here, but let's get back to the grind of this economy, shall we? And step away from putting money into the machine. So we've gone through the coin value of materials, badges and crates, as well as the pounds invested. So let's cover off exactly how much you could actually earn in this game for five days of grinding. Now in that five day period, you'll be given the opportunity to complete 45 daily challenges. That's nine a day, and completion of all of these will unlock you 300 of the weekly challenge badges. If you're able to complete every challenge for the week over that five day period, assuming that you'll also play around 200 matches in that time, now that is a lot of gameplay, all of that scrap batteries, wires and copper reward, as well as those badges on top and the unlocks you'll likely hit, we think that's actually the equivalent of 290 coins earned per week. Not bad, but still quite a lot of effort. However, these can be bolstered by joining a clan, and we would recommend you take that action early, because the opportunity cost is massive. And uh, as well as the battle passes and seasonal challenges too, putting the respective badges and unlocked items to trade is a good way of topping up the tank, so to speak. 
The XP gain then and materials collection can also be upped by making maximum use of cosmetics for that plus 25% XP, though be warned this also ups your power score, so it's only truly recommended in PvE. You can also gather a lot more resource by equipping your vehicles with fuel barrels as this provides you with that extra revenue stream, but we'll go into that in a future video. All told then, I think you can probably grind out about 550 coin per week on average, with events offering that little extra boost on top of everything we've just covered. Now it would be rude of me not to disclose that, as already mentioned, this can be a bit of a money pit of a game once you've got started investing actual pounds and pence, or dollars and cents. So if you are earning that amount mentioned moments ago of 550 coins per week, how long do you think it would take to buy every weapon in the technology tree? I'll let you have a few seconds to guess. The answer is around 660 weeks. That is close to 12 and a half years. So yeah, maybe don't set that as your end goal. But do take our lessons as guidance for getting the next few parts that you've been after, okay? Last tip of the day then, and well, I'm no stockbroker, but I can tell you that there's also a right way to buy and sell items on the market too. Never just buy something outright. If you have the absolute rush to obtain a part, you can of course go to the tech tree, right click and buy, but if you can, Take your time with each transaction, bid the lowest viable option and sell at the near maximum but not actual maximum available price too. There's always going to be someone who takes these offers eventually and even with that 10% rake the market is going to tax you on, you can trade your way to success in this game if you make astute decisions. I hope you've enjoyed this one guys, we've got loads more videos over on our channel on Crossout and many other games too, so drop us a like if you can and we will catch you next time.